Hello, hello. This is Bernie Collier on the Frame of Mind Coaching Podcast. I am podcast co-host of Fridays with Bernie that have turned on to Wednesdays. Um, I'm Kim Addis's daughter, and I'm giving the intro a little spin today. Let I us know it. how you like it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know what I realized next time when I introduce, I should let you introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I am Kim Addis. I am the president and founder of Frame Mind Coaching and the co-founder of the Journal That Talks Back. And that was a fabulous introduction. And you could do it every time if you would like. Wow. What a promotion. <laughs> I'm telling you, we've changed the rules of the game. Just we suddenly. really are. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Absolutely. So for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, what typically happens on this podcast is Fernie comes to the podcast with something to discuss. So what would you like to discuss today? So today I thought we'd take a little step back, make a very chill episode. It's been, you know, a hectic start of the semester for those who are at school and kind of leading out of the summer. So I thought today we'd have a chill little story time. Um, let's see how this goes. So I thought we would tell the story together of dun, 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 Ollie the Ostrich. Oh, that's a good one. Do you remember <laughs> what happened and when it happened? Um, I've got to say, I don't remember all the exact details, okay. but I think maybe I'll launch into it and you interrupt me as we go. Okay. Or do you want to do it the other way around? No, go ahead. All right. So um, as you all may or may not know, um, I am the youngest of four older brothers. Uh, we are a blended family, and there are six years between me, the youngest, and Jonathan, the oldest. And so between us, uh, we were all very close in age. Our neighbor, we were having a joint garage garage sale with our neighbor, and Jonathan went to buy um, a Muppet. A, a Muppet? No. What is it called? A, a marionette. Puppet. A marionette. It was a yes. marionette. And it was an ostrich. And he was very obsessed with it, very happy. And I think Brian wanted to play with it. Or um, I think Brian wanted to play with it. Brian wanted to play with it. Michael wanted to play with it. Everybody wanted to play with it. But Jonathan didn't want to let anybody play with it. So he only wanted to let them play with it in his presence. The issue was that he was going out and he didn't want anybody to touch his ostrich when he was gone so he decided to create a contract and make them sign the contract and on the contract it said you are not allowed to touch my marionette my ollie the ostrich when i am gone and so michael happily signed it he said that's fair I'm happy to sign it and jonathan or sorry jonathan asked brian to sign it too and brian refused he said, I'm not signing that. And Jonathan got very upset. So what did Jonathan do? He forged Brian's signature onto this fake contract. <laughs> How old were we all at the time? Oh, it was like gosh. nine. I think, I think Jonathan was 15. So how okay, old so were you? Uh, nine. Yeah, yeah, that was accurate. And I think then Brian was like 10. Brian was 10. So Brian was smart enough to know that forging a signature is illegal. <laughs> we are not allowed to forge signatures on contracts, <laughs> even if they are about ostriches. And even if our older brother wrote it on a piece of paper with scribbles, it doesn't matter. <laughs> he couldn't even read it. <laughs> couldn't even read it. Doesn't matter. You are not allowed to forge a signature. So Brian thought it was completely within his right to call the police and report his brother. <laughs> yeah. So Brian dialed, picked up the phone, he dialed 911. And the minute somebody answered, Brian hung up. Didn't know what to say. Didn't know what to say. And also he was kind of just challenging Jonathan a little bit. I'm going to call the police. And, you know, it was a bit playful. There was some banter going on. But when 911 gets a phone call, 911 takes it seriously. You can't just call 911 and hang up. Especially when it's on a landline. <laughs> Especially when it's on a landline. So 911 called us back. 
and said, is everything okay? And we said, yes, yes. It was just a joke. Here's what's happening. And the woman on the other end of the phone said, unfortunately, I need to send the police to your house to check in on you and make sure everything is in fact okay. So the police came. So the, the police came, they knocked on the door and we took them outside. We explained the situation. We explained about Ollie the ostrich. We explained <laughs> about the contract. We explained about forging signatures. And the police said, well, I still like, we'd still like to talk to your children. So we had all five kids lined up on the red couch, you know, our big red couch. You were all sitting <laughs> in order of age, youngest to oldest. And the police walked in. Do you remember that? Of course. It was they very went. intimidating. It was intim- <laughs> they were not happy with us, specifically Brian. Not. Right. So do not call the police if there is no real issue. Right. Do not call the police if there's no emergency. Because we believe that there's an emergency, especially when it's so sketchy and you hang up quickly, right? <laughs> um, and so the police gave you all a warning. Uh, but I think in the back of their minds, they were cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. They're like best rate of the day. <laughs> exactly. Best of the rate year. Of, the day, of the year. <laughs> and we've heard everything, but we've never heard this one before. Uh, <laughs> But then after, I think somebody started to cry. I think really it was maybe Brian. Brian started to cry because he felt very upset and disturbed and stressed out that the police came. And they, yeah, because of he, him. Yeah, he was afraid that something terrible would happen to him. Yeah. But that was that. And funnily enough, uh, the ostrich didn't last so long because <laughs> somebody did end up end up playing with the ostrich and messing with the string. So the ostrich was off, right? If the strings think, aren't all aligned, there goes your marionette. Yeah, I think it was unfunctional completely. Dysfunctional. Dysfunctional. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was that. But it gave us a lifelong story to remember. And that was <laughs> one of the earlier stories of our blended family coming yeah. together crazy experience really bonds you with people though it really bonds you that's right and what bonds you is the stories you get to tell when you're sitting around the table with all your friends and with your significant others that are (laughs) meeting the family for the first time it's so funny how everybody thinks of that story as one of the stories that we want to tell so that they get to know us as a family that we're all bonkers we're all bank bonkers. <laughs> the, the message you're trying to send. No. I, what I'm trying to say is that adversity brings people together, um, yeah. but so does humor. And yeah. so does the process of experiencing interesting things in your lifetime and living to tell the stories. And so we have a lot of that. That was one of them. And, uh, you know, if I think about how we blended our family, it was by you know, kind of uh, creating a lot of experiences that we now talk about. Yeah. Going on vacation very early on together. Going on vacation very early on together, playing games together. Uh, You know, one of the things that Alan did in our early days was he said, we travel together. Everybody goes in the same car together. There were a lot of us and we had two cars at the time. I said, why do we need to one car and squish in when we're only driving 15 minutes away we'll take two cars no or a family families travel together and I remember at the beginning uh, when we first got everybody together there was a lot of jockeying for position literally in the car so people yeah. would say I want shotgun shotgun, shotgun right and then by the end everybody had their seats nobody shotgunned anymore yeah right so I got stuck in the middle ha <laughs> ha Got stuck in the back. I'd much prefer to be in the back than in the middle. At least you have an armrest. <laughs> at least you have an armrest, but no leg space. Doesn't matter. You were short at the time. <laughs> I'm not that much taller now, but 
but we had a lot of fun together. We had a lot of uh, moments together. We have a lot of memories together. And you know what? One of the things that we do as a family is every year we celebrate family day in some unusual and bizarre way. And every every year, one of the kids works with me. To Not only the that. kids, one of the people in the family. One of the people, but usually works with me. Yeah, there's no more kids anymore. No, I'm saying sometimes you plan it. Sometimes Alan plans it. They're, you're not kids. Right. Well, I'm a it's kid. It's hard. Come on. Come on. Um, it's but hard. we plan an event every year to celebrate as a family. And so we've done all kinds of really cool things. Like we've done axe throwing. That was Fernie's idea. We did karaoke. We did family photos. Escape room. An escape room. We fed the homeless in the park. We made packages and sandwiches. We did lots of really, really cool things. And those cool things create memories. And those memories create a tight family. And I would say we have a tight family. You know, I'll tell you one more thing. The other day, Lewis brought over a friend from work. And they came over for dinner. And uh, that friend from work said, I'm so happy to meet you. Lewis raves about his family. Oh, that's so Alan, nice. Alan said, does he rant and rave or just rave? And she said, no, he just raves. Aww. And it was so nice to hear. It's nice when we hear that our kids are talking favorably about their family and want to introduce their friends and, you know, uh, whoever to us. Like that's the epitome of uh, joy and pride for me. Absolutely. Aww. I'm so glad to hear it. Man, that's it happy you got the story of ollie the ostrich we'll have to think of welcome to the family time. welcome yeah. to the family <laughs> all right guys we will catch you next time it's good for today you just got a dose of what it's like at the fax family home fax friedman for alan friedman and his kids addis for me kim addis and cotliar for fernie and lewis cotliar the fax family have a good time if you want to reach out and give us your thoughts on Ollie the ostrich and how the police showed up at our house, please do. How do they reach you, Fernie? Please email me. My email is ferniecotliar at live.com. And mine is kim at frameofmindcoaching.com. We will see you next time. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.